It's your boy Noto coming to you with another video, coming to you with another podcast, man. And in today's podcast, we're going to discuss how casting handsome slash select men who use the body game made Tyler Perry a multi-millionaire, guys. And if you're new here or if you've already been here, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead on a comment. Go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I drop a video. And without further ado, let's dive into this topic, guys. Let's dive into this topic, guys. I wanted to do a little something different for y'all, you know. Y'all been showing so much love, so much support. So I wanted to go a little in-depth on something. I'm doing a little something different. I want y'all to see. If y'all mess with it, y'all tell me in the comment section or whatever. You know, I just want to do a little, a little synopsis or whatever. Anyway... Bro, everybody knows Tyler Perry. Bro, he's he's a genius in my eyes. He's a very he's a he's a, definitely a genius. Whatever, no matter what you think about him or whatever, he's a genius, and and he really really exploited a very key factor that really aided in him making his millions for real. It really aided in him making his millions. So let's just go ahead on down the line for those that might have might want to see it. It's like a little history, a little documentary type thing I'm gonna do right here, somewhat. Anyway, just stay with me, guys. Stay with me. Okay. Now, even though the Diary of the Wet Black Mad Black Woman came in in 2005, I want to focus on what really started all this. What really, what really, like, what really, really kick started the whole using the handsome staff select men who practice the body game thing. To me, what jumped it off is the play of Medea goes to jail. If anybody remember that play, bro, that was a that was a huge, huge staple. Of what catapulted this whole thing, this whole ordeal right here, man. It's catapulted this whole ordeal. And I remember, and I remember like I actually went to this play as a jit. So anyway, we're gonna start off with this right here. This is when this, this uh when the homie uh when the dude uh Christian Keys. Yeah, as soon as he came out, he as soon as he came out, right, the ladies went crazy. I remember I was as a jitterbug. I was there, bro. I was there at, at that play, bro. I was at that play. And man, when I tell you all that, that's one thing I did remember as a as a jit. They was all screaming like as soon as he came out the door, they were all bro, my ear, I remember my ear was just hurting from all the screams that I heard when he came out that door. So right off the bat, that is already just like set the whole dynamic for the show right then and there. That set the whole dynamic right there because if it was just like somebody's walking in, okay, regular smacker, like, okay, yeah, whatever. No, nah, no, nah, that shit woke they ass right up. As soon as he walked out, as soon as he walked out that door, it started there. And then he proceeds to go down, kiss his girl, and say, okay, I want to, uh, you know, hope I get some breakfast. Then he ends up running into Ella. And she looks over there and she just, <laughs> she ended up having like this reaction to him. She looked over, see, this is why the body game is very important, guys. Very important, guys. Very important. And this is, these, this is the reaction right here. That's the reaction that, that, that they got. She ended up looking away as well. Remember, I made a video of why women look away from uh, handsome slash select men, but she definitely looked away. But then she looked back. And then like when she, when he got up close, yeah, she went on and touched him. He he went and asked her for a shirt. And she was like, don't hurry up and try to put this shirt on. What the hell are you trying to put the shirt on for? See, the thing is, Tyler Perry's a genius, man. Had him come out like that because he knew the reaction it would elicit as a, a, a response. I'm pretty sure they've already tried this and he's already seen how the ladies respond to him anyway. So it, it wouldn't be enough for him to come out in a shirt and all the ladies. Because you understand, a whole most of his, fa most of his uh, fan base for his movies and all his productions are... 90, 95% women. A, lot, a very, very, very huge percent women. I'm not sure about the certain percentage, but it's hugely women, bro. Hugely women. But anyway, she ended up feeling on his chest, feeling on his body and all that. You know how many women in the uh, in that place, in that Coliseum, wish they could have switched places with her just for that moment? Just for that moment, man. This was strategic, guys. This is very, very strategic. And and the way it was played. And she went on to sing hallelujah and everything while she's fiddling on this man. And then, and then, after that, it's a dude by the name of Ryan Gentles. He's an actor as well. He does like some modeling here and there, you know, whatever. And he comes out. And then she come out and say, oh, there's two of them. And there's two of them, huh? And then they, the ladies was 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 uh the ladies was cheering for him too, but the difference is like he didn't have to, he didn't take his shirt off. But at the same time, you gotta understand, even though his stuff was loose, they still seen the frame of his body. They they seen they seen how 
how he's shaped regardless. She didn't have to see him with his shirt off to know that that he's fit. And even though it's a scripted play, that doesn't, I mean, anybody out there in the real world can tell that somebody is fit just by the way their clothes fit. Even though his security, even though their security guard uniforms were somewhat like loosely, you can still tell, you can still see their structure. You see what I'm saying, guys? You can still see their structure. But anyway, this is where the old, the whole uh, infamous, very, very famous line came from with her. And this was like kind of like really jump started. This would, in my opinion, jump started the whole thing, bro. This the whole thing that led to what where we are now. When she went and said, How about let me twist your locks while laying on your cross? Basically, yeah. That was the whole thing. Like, yeah, that was the whole line that started all this. And the crowd went wild. <laughs> and, I, and like everybody was laughing at that. Like, now that I grew up, I was like, I see how funny that shit was. Because I ain't, as a kid, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was just laughing because everybody else was laughing. I didn't know what the hell was going on. But th- that was that was ridiculous. That's what really jump started everything. And like from that point on, now that they seen them in that light, and like later on, uh, Ryan Gentles comes out of his shirt when he's visiting the doctor or something like that. I'm like, I mean, you know, I'm not sure, but you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of iffy on this uh, t- uh, picture in particular. But it, it just shows you guys. It shows you the reactions. You see, it's almost like every woman is just damn near praising the Lord every time they see these man shirtless or. And in, in, in their presence, this is what the this is what the being in the presence of a handsome slash select man who practices the body game will have on a on a woman, man. It's the groupy energy, bro. That is supreme groupy energy, and like you just can't doubt that. You cannot doubt that. You know how how hot that got so many of the women at the beginning of the play. Talk about a dynamic opening. Yeah, that that that's an engaging opening right there. So now that they that they've seen these men, they are very, very much more tuned, more more tuned in when they see them. That they can see them in regular clothes, but they know what's under there now. You see what I'm saying? Like they're more and more tuned in. That that grabbed their attention from from the beginning, and that's how genius Tyler Perry was with that. I, I very admit that that is very extremely genius with that. But let me go ahead and move on after that. But even though this movie came out before this play. I still credit that play for really jumpstarting this, but we can go on and talk about the Diary of the Mad Black Woman movie. And in this one, and they in this one, they made it more relatable to the to the regular working class man by introduction in, in, introduction of uh, Shamar Moore. Now everybody knows who Shamar Moore is, yeah, you've seen him in several movies, but he was played like as a warehouse dude, pretty much hired there to. You know, he was doing a side job to get her stuff off the the premises after she's been thrown out by her husband or whatever. So basically, it's like we we see this like you you'll be under, you'll understand that guys, it doesn't matter like what you do because you gotta understand. Even though she was thrown out and treated bad, her husband in this in this particular movie had a whole bunch of money, whole bunch of money. He was a very very successful lawyer lawyer. So back then, at the end of the day, and Shamar Moore, he came there. They did this, but they ended up accumulating. As more time came past, they ended up developing some type of relationship. You see what I mean? Like as time go on, as time go on, the issue, you know, she was hurt, whatever. But they ended up going out. But then she ended up falling for him. You see what I mean? She ended up falling for the man. But this was makes it more relatable because if we got so many working class men in this environment and then in the real world. The, the, that's what really drives the world, to be honest, the working class men. And we're the, pretty much the builders, the the whole the 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 very, very strong men. The, they got the blue collars. They got the, the warehouse men. This is really what makes this world go round. And I'm glad that they really kind of captured that dynamic by showing him being in the warehouse. They could have just showed him being like another corporate dude or something like that. It wouldn't have hit the same way if he was just a corporate dude in the office sitting in a cubicle and they came back around, you know, it was this, it's, it's way of a different dynamic. And the fact that he made, he, he chose a select man such as Shamar Moore to play this part. It all just, it all just fitted in. It all just fitted in. And that made that, that, that was a huge dynamic because not only did it seem, even, no matter what he did, the way, the effect that he had on her, 
and the effect that it'll have on the uh, on the viewer will say that okay, he looks better than him. That's what they would say. That's what most of then her then her uh, ex husband. That's what most of the people would say. So they would look at him as an upgrade, even though he might not have as much money as him. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? You see how that? You see how when I say the 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 looks, money, status, and all that stuff, uh, and how the body game beats status, money, and status, and stuff like that. That's that's how it is. And on top of that, he's uh he's considered handsome. So on top of that, you know, all of that played into parts, and she had a chance to go back to that and get everything when he was willing to quote unquote act right. But she still went to go get her man right in the middle of the warehouse. Right in the middle of the warehouse, guys. And that was a very, very good casting call made by the genius Tyler Perry by by highlighting that fact, you know, and that that, you know, the that is we can relate more to that. It's more relatable to us. And let's go on and move on to this. And no, 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 not just going to move on to that. We're going to show the gross the gross profit of this movie was 50.7 million with a budget of 5.5 million. Yeah. That's it. That's, 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 just, that's just the beginning. That's the beginning, guys. Keep keep it, keep it, keep your seatbelts on. We're gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep it going. The next movie was the Medea's Family Reunion. I know you guys are very uh, familiar with this. Very familiar with this. Now, in this movie, we have Blair Underwood. Now, in this one, he looks more like the the professional type of dude. Like this dude looks more like the mogul. He plays more like the mogul in that role, but. Even though it's just a role, even in real life, he looks more like that clean cut guy that dresses up most of the time. He don't seem like much of the athletic type dude that wear athletic stuff. He's always professionally dressed. You see what I mean? And and, and more times than not, he, he's more of a he's more of a clean cut dude in that in that in that uh in that lane right there. He looks more like a mogul. He looks more like a boss. He looks more like a CEO. I put it that more yeah, more so often. And that's the effect that he has on. That's what makes that's his that's his whole select image right there. That's what makes him select the women and the women that respond to him. You, I know y'all have seen these interviews and stuff like that. People saying stuff and all that. Y'all y'all see the comments and all that. They all most a lot of women going very crazy over him. You guys gotta understand that, man. Y'all can't just get. I mean, you can't just get past that. Even though he wears suits most of the time, and that doesn't mean that he's a sloppy sloppy dude either. And he's considered handsome by a lot of women too. He might not see what I'm saying. Like it could be a lot of dudes come over here, blow. Like, oh, he's not handsome. He's just a, a funny looking dude. He looks like he could be on good times or something. You know what I'm saying? But that's another dude. What's another dude saying? That's what a lot of dudes be, be saying. They'll say they try to rank on this man. Are you how are you? That's what I said. That's why I made that video. I say only the women can decide or determine whether a man is select or not. The women determine that. Not other men. They don't know what the woman see. Shout out to Ron Wills. They don't have a vagina. You see what I mean? They do not have a vagina. Okay, moving on with that. Another another uh, person they had in this, Boris Kodjo. Kodjo, I don't know how you pronounce his last name, but his name was Boris Kodjo. Pretty much he played the bus driver. He was the bus driver that was on here. And that 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 actually highlighted, highlighted a good dynamic for this as well because at the end of the day, a lot of people will probably look down because of his job description but remember i made the, the uh, video about the janitors how janitors get women in higher positions at work this is a good example this is a good example of like it doesn't matter what you do but even though in the movie her mom tried to shame what he did but she didn't give a damn you got to understand he was hitting on that cylinder cylinder he's considered handsome he's considered select he's considered to be used the body game. I noticed you guys notice a big pattern with all the guys that I'm mentioning right here. It's a big pattern now. It's a very big pattern. We're gonna get back to that. We're gonna get back to that. The bar is cordial. Yeah, definitely. Consider select by plenty of women. Pl- plenty of women. There's, there's no there's no there's no there's no uh doubt about that. Another dude in this movie, he just kinda like a bi uh, like a little bi person on it, but still worth a mention because you know, Tyler Perry, he's just so genius. He put people in the backgrounds, but he's, they still have an effect on it. Dude named Henry Simmons. Yeah. Dude named Henry Simmons. Yeah, they definitely put him. 
put him in there while he was on the steps with the granddad. Yeah, just having it there, just having that dynamic around more and more so often, even though he's not like a main character or nothing like that, they still had him on there. And it's just worth a little honorable mention. And of course, another dude that I still count that started it all was in this movie as well, Ryan Gentles. From the, remember when I told you about the Medea Goes to Jail play earlier? Yeah, he was. He came on here. He was like a stripper. They brought him in. He came in like a police officer, like they was about to arrest, like he was about to arrest her, and he went to stripping, and they was going crazy about him. <laughs> that was that was crazy, man. They had that whole dynamic in there. You know, come on, man. Tyler Perry is, is strategically putting this here. It doesn't matter if it was just a little joke scene or, or whatever on some bachelorette type shit. It doesn't matter. The fact that he used him and he strategically paid, placed him, and that was genius. Because they're like highlighting, you got to understand, you could be in the middle of a movie and you feel like, okay, things are getting bland. And all of a sudden, a man pops out like that. Remember, his hugest audience are females, are women. And they see that, they're going to get turned on. They're going to get hot. Give a damn about that. They're going to get hot behind that. And that's what makes him such a big genius. And this movie, the gross profit, $63.4 million, with a budget of $6 million. You see how huge that mar- profit margin is, man? See how much money is making just by using these key factors in these in these movies. And it's not saying, oh, but it's all that is winning. They had a beautiful woman in there as well. Oh man, shut the fuck up! You cannot deny the fact that the handsome select being played a big key part in this. And if you feel like it, it didn't, you fucking delusional. You're delusional because if he just used regular schmegular guys, but that shit would not have, would not have hit like that. He knew he had to get the top of the top. Moving on, why did I get married, man? We got Michael Jai White. We all know who he is. He's the actor. He's the martial artist. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely highlighted them real good in this one. He highlighted them real good. And he had like this, his wife that was all crazy and all that stuff. But most likely, a lot of that calmed down because she was she was like feeling on him and stuff a lot too. She was groping on him a lot of stuff too. But, she, but the thing is, she always accused him of cheating because of how he looks. He considers select. He he practices the body game. She look at him. She and she get turned on. She she know a lot of women gonna look at him and get turned on. You see what I'm saying? That's the big that's the big dynamic that that plays, man. That's a huge dynamic that that plays, for sure, for sure. And then we got Richard T. Jones, man. Now one thing y'all can say about Richard T. Jones, like bro, like a lot of people, it, it's I've been heard dudes. Like I say, it's always the dudes that saying something. Say, like, oh, he ain't this man. He ain't, he ain't like that. He's not considered handsome or nothing like that, bro. What the fuck are you judging another man for, man? This man, this man that made his staple in that. There's a lot of women are saying this man is handsome. There's a lot of men that are select, are choosing, treating him like a select man. This man came down all the way from the movie The Wood. Man, I'm gonna show this man some respect. Y'all, 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 wildin', man. Y'all wildin'. I said they want to talk about this man. But anyway, like he like he's some type of peon. Like he like he ain't like he ain't like like he ain't earning stripes or something in his industry. But anyway, man, that this this movie, this whole movie has four heavy hitters, and he one of them. He definitely one of them. Just because just because y'all y'all see that y'all y'all are males, y'all not females. It is what it is. And we got a dude named Malik Yoba. Yeah, definitely. We got the name, uh, the dude Malik Yoba. He kind of reminds me of Idris Elba a little bit, just a little bit. That's like a like another version of Idris Elba. But I don't want to say this compare this man to another man or whatever. So I'm just put it like that. And uh, yeah, he definitely plays a dynamic. He got that big build. Definitely more like on the rough looking side. So you know what I'm saying. But he definitely got that build, and he definitely will be considered select by a whole bunch of women. Yeah, oh, definitely, because at the end of the day, he was matched up with Janet Jackson. So what that, that has to tell you a lot that he was matched with Janet Jackson, and it fit. And it fit. That's what you got you got to look at. It, it fit. He didn't just grab some run-of-the-mill dude just that ain't been rough. He could just grab any dude off the street. It wouldn't have hit the same. Guys, you got to understand, that shit would not have hit the same at all. And then moving on, we got Lamon Rocker. Lamon Rucker, 
whatever his name is, Lamb and Rucker. He played in the five heartbeats. We know what I'm saying? Sang with uh singing with one of them. <laughs> no, no, it was uh Temptations, I believe. It was Temptations. Singing with David Ruffin and shit. Yeah, man, this man, yeah, this man definitely created a staple in the industry. And Tyler Perry definitely wanted him a part of the cast. He has that effect. He got the jawline, all that shit. All that shit. Uh, the Hollywood smile, all that shit. So yeah, that's what they. That's what. That's that's those are the highlights. You got to. You got to. You guys got to look at this shit. You know what I'm saying? That's not me just sitting there just judging the man. But when you just look at everything, like bro, like you, you see a pattern, bro. That's 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 a whole thing. You see a whole big pattern with this, and you understand that, guys. He's casted these people for a reason. He didn't, didn't be like, oh, it's because he got Janet Jackson in the movie. Oh, it's because he had The Rock at the end, which is an honorable mention as well. But I didn't really want to mention him too much in this because he was just at the end. And, bro, it's just, it's just because they had uh, Janet Jackson in the movie. It's because they had other women in the movie. They were very beautiful as well. So you can't just say that the men helped him make millions of dollars. Well, who the fuck did they have to match with then? This is because why did I get married? If it was just about the women, why did he just have other women? In this case, they got men that were handsome slash select who used the body game. Every last person I mentioned in this video, there is a pattern. There is a pattern. They are considered select. They have the body build. Yes, the body build, which plays a very, very important thing. You cannot get past that. They exhibit the body game all throughout everything they do. Every time they move, you see that. You see that frame. You see that. They consider handsome. You can see their faces on top of that. But even though that's not the whole, the whole, the whole thing, but that that's a, that's the case too. He, he wanted them handsome and select. He wanted them handsome select with the body game. That was the big pattern between all these people that was mentioned here. And he is a complete genius. And I, I I applaud Tyler Perry, man, because this man is a genius. And if you think he ain't, you are fucking delusional. Take some fucking notes. Especially if you're an upcoming director. You need to have some motherfucking men in your select men in your fucking productions. Why you think a lot of people are starting to copy his uh starting to copy his uh the way he do things now? You used to see all these dudes and stuff like that. You'll see like a little soap opera, but the way they the Tyler Perry exhibited them. He, he, he showed them in a whole different light. He presented them in a different way than any, any other production has. And now they're trying to follow suit. Get that. Anyway, it's your boy Noto. Coming to you another video. Coming to you another podcast, man. If you made it this far, go on and get that like button. Go on and comment. Go on and subscribe. And click that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I drop a video. And remember, guys, anybody can improve themselves if they're willing to work at it. I'm out. Thank you.